to the first question. Hello, Didier. One question about Paul Bogda. He was uh, in Portugal. He was really important. Is that something you also train in the training sessions? And uh, against this team of uh, Switzerland, do you expect a Pogba a little bit higher on the pitch? Listen, uh, Paul is a complete midfielder. He has so many qualities. Uh, he can pass vertically, diagonally. This is part of his, uh, of his game. Then, of course, we work on the positioning, but it's not only about uh, playing good passes. It's also about the positioning before the pass. So his role is quite liberal. He's not limited in uh, the offensive approach. Uh, if uh, there's need also, he can go back to win the ball uh, behind. But of course, it's uh, on the pitch. Yeah, sometimes he can play a little bit higher, a little bit lower. His position can develop also um, between uh, the left and the right side. It depends also on the positioning of the other players. Hello, Didier. You had uh, quite some injuries during those last days. Uh, Chiram seems really serious. Uh, and Lucas Hernandez, uh, Jules Koundé, uh, is, they are a little bit better maybe. Are they available for tomorrow? Listen, what you can say today is uh, Lucas Digne, Marcus Thuram and Jules Koundé won't be available probably but uh, most probably that won't be the case of Lucas Hernandez. Hello, Mr. Deschamps. Deschamps. What do you think about this uh, Swiss team? Is there one player that concerns you maybe a little bit? Is there one player that you told your players they have to, be, they have to pay attention? I have the most respect of this uh, Swiss team. Uh, I admire the work of my colleague uh, Petkovic uh, since he's there. Um, it's uh, not for nothing that they are third in the FIFA world ranking. Um, he has an offensive trio since the beginning of the competition with Embolo, Seferovic and Shakiri, who create uh, many things. Uh, the, Two uh, midfielders, Shaka, Shaka and Frola, even if they had a difficult match against Italy, they're still a very good European team. And uh, in terms of my players, um, how could I put it? I don't tell them that everything will be easy. Uh, it will be a round of 16 match, so everybody will be on the pitch and everybody will give everything to be in the quarterfinals afterwards. Hello, Didier. Everybody said that it's uh, now a new phase, a new tournament. Did you feel something also among uh, the players? Is it a different atmosphere, different ambience? Well, it's a different context now. On the, in the first phase, we uh, reached what we wanted to reach, the first place in our group, uh, which allows us to play Switzerland tomorrow. And of course, when you play a group match, you know there's two other matches coming, but now we play, it's like a final. And, um, and of course, the goal, the only goal is to reach the quarterfinals. And, this is by winning against Switzerland. And to add something, yes, the impressions of the first tour, I've seen Italy, uh, they, they delivered maybe the best impression during the group matches and it wasn't easy for them. So all matches are difficult, uh, no matter what team is playing. You always have to prepare very well and there's always um, top players also in the opponent's team. And it's like that tomorrow too. Good day. Switzerland plays the same system as Germany and Hungary. 
do you think uh, with their style of play then they are still different to Germany or Hungary? Do you think they will try to search the ball very high? I can say that maybe with uh, the three offensive players, Shakiri, Embolo and Seferovic, they will try to press us high. Sometimes they will be lower. I can tell this will develop in the match and we adapt to our opponent also. Will they be more cautious uh, against us? <laughs> It depends. It's really difficult to answer. I'm not in their place. What I can say is that our intention is to create problems for them and to win this match. Hello, Didier. Could you explain to us how does it work when you have to take big decisions tactically, for example, do you discuss with your players beforehand? Do they have also some weight for those decisions, tactical decisions? Well, that's an ambiguous question. Listen, before any match, I do the analysis. Well, there's two possibilities. Either I decide and or I just impose. So I like to decide myself, but also I speak with my players and then I take the decision with them. But uh, my goal is my goal is to have all players in their best position to be the best uh, performance, the most performance possible. And from this point on, there's all the work, uh, video analysis, observation of the opponent. But I don't want that you interpret it the way that I adapt only to my opponent. I analyze their strong points and their weak points. And if we adapt, it's always in the goal to be the most dangerous uh, for the opponent. But I can reassure you, I take the decisions. Hello, Didier. Rafael Varane, um, people talk about him, that he, with him you could change the tactical system with a back three like you played in September in the Nations League. Yeah, this is an option. Yeah, of course, that's an option. That's an option, a decision that could be taken or not. If I did it in uh, last autumn, well, I wouldn't reveal it now. I won't tell you now. It's a different situation. And I repeat what I already said. The decision, the, the, the decision I take is always to be the most dangerous for our opponent. Well, we were welcomed uh, very nicely. We didn't complain about anything. We didn't choose the hotel. The UEFA told us to go to this hotel, but it's very nice, very good. It's really great to see so many supporters. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't take pictures with them or giving um, uh, uh, autographs. The stadium that we had yesterday for the training was in a very good state, very good quality, so there's no concern at all. And I can even add that we that we are a little bit better than in Budapest here because of the temperature. Even if it's really hot here, um, it's a little bit uh, fresher than in Budapest. So about the accommodation, there's nothing to say. Hello, Didier. Does it, does it work now? Can you hear me? Yes. Please take down your mask. 
you spoke about uh, tactics in September and October. I'd like to know when you played with uh, three fullbacks and uh, wingers, you never chose to use uh, Lucas Hernandez. Uh, could this change tomorrow? Could he be? Uh, could he be your secret weapon? You know that I won't answer that question. You will have the answer tomorrow. You you don't have to ask me this kind of questions. He could he could play in uh, the center too, but then it's a different profile. There are different profiles which can be employed. Okay, we take on two last questions quickly. Hello, Didier. Angolo Conte has become a global phenomenon because he's so humble, because of his quality on the pitch. And you, as a, his coach, could you explain how does he help the squad? Um, how is he kind of a dream element for any coach? I can confirm that, uh, but it's mostly about what he's doing on the pitch because you can be humble as you want if you don't have the quality on the pitch. Uh, you don't, you're not, uh, uh, you don't get that reputation. Yes, of course, he's humble. He's a nice guy. And as a coach, uh, yes, of course, it's a privilege to have a player like that. And also for the whole squad, when we have uh, training sessions, uh, if they have to choose uh, a player, if they choose uh, among them, uh, Angolo is always one of the first chosen. He's not the most expressive guy, um, vocally expressive, but what he's doing on the pitch is really essential for the French team and all teams where he played and plays. And one last question. Hello, Didier. A phenomena that we've seen in this Euro is the heat. You did your preparation in Clairefontaine. How hard is the change now? And the second question, is there some kind of inequality between the teams who played in the south of Europe and the others who played in, in northern Europe because of the heat? Excuse me, I can't... I can't, I can't survey uh, the weather forecast for what it's going to be in three weeks. And now we have this weather and then we had a match at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon against Hungary. Then there's other teams who have to travel a lot, a long way, uh, like it's for Switzerland, uh, by the way. And uh, well, uh, it's, that's the calendar. If you have so many teams, uh, there are some teams who will have a disadvantage, but I won't complain because when you're in Russia, for example, there's also um, the time shift and other temperatures. Uh, honestly, we look at other things. Uh, we are concerned about other things. Uh, me and my staff, we analyze too much. But what we have to manage now and in order to decrease the fatigue and, and to have a better regeneration, um, these hot temperatures uh, doesn't help. It didn't, don't help. And of course, it's uh, really intense uh, on the bodies, on the physics. But uh, don't count on me to speak about injustice or inequality. Like uh, for this match now, I won't complain. We had five days to regenerate. Uh, normally we have four. The Swiss had eight and well, all the better for them. But I prefer to have five rather than four days and I don't want to complain. The training starts in 20 minutes. We go now. Thank you for your attention. I'd like to add one thing to finish a little message. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say hello uh, to our generation of 84. So once again, a big bravo to them. And also, I'd like to say hello to the family of Michelle Hidalgo, all her friends and all her family who 
did a really nice thing for her yesterday at the 